It's pretty telling, isn't it, that the Biden administration is fighting harder, or I should say fighting at all, to get near Tandon to be the director of the Office of Management and Budget than they are for a $15 an hour minimum fucking wage. I mean, it's just it's very telling and revealing, isn't it, and quite fucking disgusting at the same time. I mean, for God damn. With respect, uh, the history Here's of the his Senate press secretary. They are both formerly served in the Senate, and that's not an action we intend to take. But I... You said that he respects that decision, but progressives don't understand this. In some respect, they're like, why not fight for this? So why is the White House not more aggressively challenging that and sending the vice president? Because it's a way for them to get away with, well, we, we really wanted to do this, but the poli parliamentarian who isn't elected and who we could fire and who we don't actually have to listen to told us that we can't do it, so we're not going to do it because we actually don't don't give a shit. You know, we're more concerned with near fucking Tandon. And, and potentially overrule that with the vote. Well, uh, the, the decision for a vice, the vice president to... Uh, vote to overrule or to take a step to overrule is not a simple decision. Uh, uh, it yeah, it actually is very simple. You say, no, fuck off. People need at least bare bones fucking $15 minimum wage. Fuck off, parla parliamentarian. And then Biden and Harris could use the bully pulpit, the huge, massive, you know, media, social media platforms, press conferences like yeah we're we're fighting like hell see what we're doing we're trying to make sure you get minimum wage and by backtracking from this it's going to be hugely disastrous for democrats in the 2022 midterms and and beyond i mean jesus fucking christ look how i mean just how ridiculous how dystopian is that like they're trying to find every way to wiggle out of fighting for a $15 an hour minimum wage by blaming it on this fucking ridiculous parliamentarian bullshit. And yet they're fighting like hell to get near a fucking tandem confirmed in their administration. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, as you know, it's not a one step decision. And the president and the vice president both respect uh, the history of... A.K.A. They don't really want you to get in $15 minimum wage and they're continuing to go back on everything that they promised during their campaign, uh, but they obviously can't come out and say that, so they're just going to blame it on the par parliamentarian why you can't have a $15 minimum wage. Senate, uh, they are both formerly served in the Senate and that's not an action we intend to take. But I, <laughs> the president is committed... But we will fight like hell for near a fucking tandem. <laughs> raising the minimum wage He's obviously not committed to it if he's not fighting for it. I mean, this fucking doublespeak and propaganda and just outright bullshit coming from the press secretary, very reminiscent of Donald Trump administration, no? Go forward to doing that. That's why he put it in the package. He wants it to be raised to 15. He, uh, he obviously and doesn't. He be in touch with uh, leaders uh, from all wings of the party and determining the best path forward for that. God, she's so yeah, horrible. Jeff's question, which, which strikes me, the, the, the White House doesn't have 50 votes to confirm near a tandem as OMB director, and yet uh, we heard from the White House chief of staff say that the White House is going to fight their guts out. Fight their, their guts, guts out. To get her confirmed. So why push for that and not push as hard, one could say, for raising the minimum wage? Yes, yeah. one could very accurately say that they're not fighting. They're not fighting at all, as as we've seen. I mean, the blame it on the fucking parliamentarian pro. It's ridiculous. Yes, and of course they would benefit more than a fit from a fifteen dollar minimum wage than having near a fucking Tandon as the director of the OMB. I mean, Jesus Christ! And look how she's trying to spin this. Watch. But he's not fighting his guts out for that, is he? But they sure as hell are for fucking near a tandem. Strongly that it's long overdue, that men and women working hard, trying to make ends meet, shouldn't be living at the poverty level. That's why he put it in his package. There is a process that go it goes through, a parliamentary process. It, when it's a reconciliation. And you don't have to listen to the fucking parliamentarian, Jesus Christ. 
It's not binding. It's a recommendation. You can say no. Fuck off. People need this. Bill, as you know, but for people who haven't been following all the nitty gritty of this, because it's a budgetary bill, uh, that's why it went through the process. And oh my god, I can't, I can't handle any fucking more of Jen Psaki or her goddamn press conferences. It's so fucking horrible. So here's David Sroda in the Guardian. Um, Biden says his hands are tied on $15 minimum wage. That's not true. Um, when a Republican is president, Democrats, Democratic politicians, pundits, and activists will tell you that the presidency is an all-powerful office that can do anything it wants. When a Democrat is president, these same politicians, pundits, and activists tell you that the presidency has no power to do anything. In fact, they will tell you a Democratic president cannot use the bully pulpit and other forms of pressure to try to shift the votes of senators in his own party. I mean, yeah, what again, what the fuck is the point of electing anybody if they're not going to actually fight for the things they campaigned on, like a $15 minimum wage, like a $2,000 stimulus checks, like canceling student loan debt? I mean, Jesus Christ. Tell from history proves this latter myth is complete garbage and that tell is newly relevant today's supercharged debate over $15 minimum wage. In that debate so far, we've seen Democratic senators prepare to surrender the $15 minimum wage their party promised by insisting they are powerless in the face of a non-binding non advisory opinion of a parliamentarian they can ignore or fire. Seems pretty fucking simple. Non-binding. They can ignore it. They can fire the piece of shit whatever you don't need to listen you don't need to do it they're doing this because they don't really want to fight for it they don't really want to give you a 15 dollars minimum wage and it's it's fucking disgusting on every level um that explanation is patently ridiculous and factually false so democratic apologists are starting to further justify the surrender by suggesting that even if the party kept a 15 dollars minimum wage in the COVID relief bill Conservative Dems such as Manchin and Cinema would block it anyway. Then use the fucking bully pulpit. You go campaign in those states. You go hold rallies. What is it? Cinema's Arizona, Manchin's in West Virginia. You go to those states. You have Harris. You have the president. You have other people out there saying these motherfuckers don't want you to get a fifteen dollar minimum wage. We're out here fighting like hell to make sure you do. You call them out. You use the fucking bully pulpit. I mean, Jesus Christ, not that fucking difficult. You don't, <laughs> you don't just, just concede because you don't think you might get it. You fight like hell if it's actually something you believe in, if it's something you truly support. Again, we're seeing the complete opposite on this issue from Joe Biden, just like what we have seen from so many others. <sighs> um... Let's see whether such pressure ultimately works. The point is indisputable. It is laughable and preposterous to argue that a newly elected president has zero power even to try to shift the dynamic. Yes, exactly. There's so many ways they could try to, um, you know, change the narrative on this issue. And again, a massive majority of people support a $15 an hour minimum wage. It's a hugely popular issue. And if you, you go out there and use the bully pulpit to call out the politicians that are trying to block it. You could probably get them to cave, I would think. At least fucking try it if this is actually something you support. And yet, whether you call this all deliberate deception or learned helplessness, this fantastical myth of the powerless president will inevitably be used to shield Biden from criticism for abandoning his pledge to fight for $15. Again, it's all, it's all a fucking... Um, you know, show just to like, yeah, we can't, we can't really do it. The parliamentarian said this, that we couldn't, even though we don't have to listen and they're non-binding and we could tell them to fuck off. We don't really want to because we didn't actually want to fight for this in the first place. And it's a good excuse for us not to. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's just so fucking disgusting. And then you have all these democratic and liberal hacks in the media and outside of it trying to justify it kamala harris again 
she supposedly supports this, but she's falling in line as well as soon as she got that VP slot, isn't she? Kamala Harris needs to act now to advance $15 minimum wage. Andrew Perez, David Sorotic, Jacobin. Let's see. Um, the ruling from the parliamentarian means that the VP Harris could decide the fate of one of the Democratic Party's most significant pam campaign promises, but it remains unclear what sh she's not going to do shit. She's not going to do shit. She's a complete and utter party hack, unfortunately. As the president, presiding officer of the Senate, Harris, who has long touted her support of a $15 minimum wage, can now use the power her predecessors have used to ignore the, the advisory opinion and fulfill Biden's campaign promise to boost the wage. A confidential memo we obtained that is now circulating on Capitol Hill spells out exactly how that could be accomplished. However, and here you go, White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain this week declared that Harris will refuse to use that power. Hmm, how fucking convenient. A decision that would effectively put the Biden-Harris admin in the position of potentially killing the prospect of uh, minimum wage legislation for the foreseeable future. I mean, it's so fucking disgusting. Um, White House issued a statement. Biden respects the parliamentarian's decision because he really doesn't give a shit about the working people and could care less if they have a $15 minimum wage, and this is a very easy way to just scapegoat the par parliamentarian. I mean, Jesus Christ. And here's uh, Jayapal, completely correct here. It's been 12 years since we raised the minimum wage. If we're going to make those promises, we have to be able to deliver on them, Democratic Rep Pramila Jayapal said Wednesday on MSNBC. Because I'll tell you what, in two years, when people vote in the midterms, you're not going to be able to say, well, I'm sorry we couldn't raise the minimum wage because the parliamentarian rule ruled that we couldn't do it. That's not, yes, completely. And just just the fucking optics. I mean, um, I could say one thing about Republican politicians. They're actually willing to stand up and fight for the shit they believe in. It's obviously horrible and, and racist and disastrous and, uh, you know, capitalistic to the exponential degree but at least they're willing to fight for the things that they supposedly claim to believe in and yet democratic hacks like biden like harris um because they don't really believe anything and it's just well we got in these positions of power everybody else can fuck off so much for pushing the biden administration to the left where is all the people out there who are claiming we'd be able to push them to the left i mean jesus fucking christ Ultimately, it's the vice president of the United States, um, McDonough, that's the parliamentarian, however, refused to do so. The development is now catastrophic for the $15 minimum wage provision. If Harris simply uses her power to ignore the opinion and clear the path to the measure she has long insisted she, she supports, the problem is that the White House is signaling she'll do the opposite. Jesus fucking Christ. If Harris refuses to use her power, that decision could leave workers who are paid poverty wages and toiling in hazardous conditions during the pandemic to wait indefinitely for better pay. And Democrats will probably lose in, in the landslide, frankly, um, in 2022 and potentially probably the White House. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. Is the Biden administration actually going to do any of the things that they campaigned on? Any of the things? I have yet to yet to see any of it. <laughs> um, there's Klain, another party hack. Vice presidents have ignored the parliamentarian in the past. According to Slate, Vice President Hubert Humphreys routinely ignored his parliamentarian advice. Um, 67, 69, 75. Former Senate parliamentarian Robert Dove. Ultimately, it's the vice president of the United States. It is the decision of the VP whether or not to play a role here. And I've seen vice presidents play that role in other very important situations. The parliamentarian can only advise it's the vice president who rules. You don't need to listen to their fucking advice. It's a vice. You can decide whether to take it or leave it. In this case, obviously fucking ignore it. If you are truly, in fact, in support of 
getting everybody in the U.S. a $15 minimum wage. I mean, Jesus Christ. It's so fucking disheartening. But again, not surprising. The Democratic Party is a, is a right-wing party, as Chomsky has pointed out, and clearly, clearly not working in the best interest of the working class, or they would be ignoring the fucking parliamentarian saying, fuck off, no, this is something we support, this is something we promised, we're going to fight like hell to make sure this happens. They're not doing that. It would take 60 votes to overturn the rolling ruling of the chair on a bird rule point of order, regardless of what the parliamentarian advises, states the memo. memo. Based So meaning, if Harris jumped in and said, no, fuck off, we're, we're going to ignore that, it would take 60 votes to overturn that. You could probably get probably not going to get 60 people to vote against giving people $15 minimum wage, especially with how utterly fucked the economy is for the working class right now in the United States. Based on a search of the congressional record, it appears that only twice has the chair's ruling on a bird rule point of order been appealed. Both instances occurred in 93. Um, what would probably happen is a senator would appeal the ruling of the chair, then the full Senate would vote on whether to sustain the appeal. It says the chair's ruling would be upheld as long as there are not 60 affirmative votes to sustain the appeal. So if the majority could hold enough members together, less than 60, that ruling runs counter to the parliamentarian's advice would be upheld. There, So there you fucking go. Pretty fucking simple. It would take 60 votes to overturn Kamala Harris if she said, no, we're going to ignore the parliamentarian on the issue of the $15 minimum wage. Pretty fucking simple, right? Um, memo suggests Democrats would be setting up minimum wage. No shit, Sherlock. If in the same scenario that that the chair followed the parliamentarian's advice and a senator from the majority party in favor of the president at issue or appeal that ruling, then it would also take 60 affirmative votes to overturn the chair's ruling. Thus, majority would be in a weaker position by doing it this way because they would... It's so fucking disgusting. Biden has been retreating for weeks on, on a number of things. Um, let's see... Yeah, you went back on the $2,000 stimulus checks. Now it's $1,400 if you ever get those. Raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour could affect the wage of 27 million U.S. workers. Earlier this week, the Federal Reserve published research showing that current federal minimum wage of $7.25 is le worth less today than... No, yes, obviously. And obviously, $15 minimum wage would benefit the most vulnerable and marginalized people among us um and yet they can't even fight for that again disgusting but not surprising in the least unfortunately willing to fight like hell fight their guts out for near tandem but not for a fucking 15 dollar minimum wage disgusting disgusting like the video if you like the damn video subscribe for more content peace much love